All right, amusement insiders, picture this. You're walking through Canada's Wonderland, heading into Medfair. You're on your way to ride Leviathan, or to get in line at least. And you hear music approaching behind you. Not the music that's playing in Medfair around you, but loud music coming from behind you. What could that be? You turn around, and there are ushers telling you to please move to the lines on the side, which you haven't noticed. You haven't noticed these lines on the ground, but there they are. There's lines on the ground. So you move behind the lines, and all of a sudden you're like, huh, we made a little road here. Looks like we're on sidewalks. And you look in the direction of the music, and incoming is a parade with floats, with performers. There's acrobatics happening. Every couple of songs, the parade stops, and you notice that the performers who you usually see doing the trampoline and dive show on the lagoon, right where you are in Medfair, are actually in this parade. And every time the float stops, they do like trampoline tricks and stuff. It's a really cool show. You happen to notice that the different sections and floats in the parade are themed to the different areas of the park. You have a Frontier Canada float, you have a Medfair float, you have an Expo float which shows off lots of different cultures in that one float and with the different performers dressed up to different cultures. This is a really cool experience, something you might see at a Disney theme park. Join me, let's talk about it. All right, so for those who watched my first episode about Mindbuster, one, I'm probably going to redo that episode someday because it was my first video that was like unscripted and that was a challenge for me, but we got through it. So what we recorded is going up, but in this video, I'm feeling a lot more comfortable. So I'm standing, we've got some kinetics going, I can let out my energy and I can talk to you guys. Um, I also didn't explain my hustle sign in the last video, so uh, there's there's really no context to this. I just thought it was funny to turn on this hustle sign and put it in the video. Um, yeah, we won it at an arcade. Uh, my husband and I, we won this. We got 10,000 tokens and we decided this LED ridiculous hustle sign was what we wanted to spend <laughs> our 10,000 tickets on. Um, anyways, so welcome to today's video. We are going to talk about, what are we talking about? Oh my God, the parade. <laughs> um, I still don't know what I'm calling my segment here on Amusement Insiders. Uh, for those of you who know me from my other channel, Jasmine Dreams, well, my channel, ja this is not my channel, this is Brendan's channel, but Brendan, for whatever reason, has given me time on Amusement Insiders. <laughs> so here we are. Doing whatever this is. I don't know what to call it yet, so we'll give it a name in time, but welcome to another episode. Um, and today I want to daydream with you about a parade at Canada's Wonderland. Something that I think Canada's Wonderland really deserves and has done before and should do again. So let's get into it. Okay, so in the last video I mentioned that I have a little bit of history here on Amusement Insiders. Uh, I've been around a minute. <laughs> I've been contributing to the channel on and off for years now. And for those of you who have chatted with me a lot, you'll know that I worked at Wonderland uh, f several blue moons ago uh, in a former lifetime. <laughs> um, I was actually in the Nickelodeon Celebration Parade, which happened, I believe it was 2006 season if I'm not mistaken, but I'm going to have to look up video footage of it to, to, ooh, sorry, I'm knocking the mic. I'm going to deafen you all. Um, yeah, I'm probably going to have to look up video footage of it to include in this video. So I'll be able to fact check myself and, uh, you know, put text on the screen if I'm wrong. Uh, if you don't see a different date on the screen, then my memory's still working. All right. So the Nickelodeon parade was obviously Nickelodeon themed. So there wasn't a whole lot outside of like SpongeBob and Dora and uh, the Fairly Odd Parents, because at the time the park was owned by Paramount. The park is now owned by Cedar Fair. So we don't have the Nickelodeon characters anymore. We did for a couple of years after the purchase and changeover happened. Um, we don't have those characters anymore. So as much as I loved having SpongeBob, I was actually on the SpongeBob float myself. I'll try to include footage 
I found footage ages ago that had like a brief clip of me in it and it was super blurry because it was like taken on a 2006 cell phone. So if I can find that again, I'll include it here so you guys can see. Um, but I was on the SpongeBob float. I was a dancer, did my little jigs in my ridiculously hot orange uniform. It's funny because I'm actually wearing something kind of like the uniform tops today. So now my fashion is the uniform I once complained about. But my point is that the Nick Parade was something that happened across Paramount Parks. I believe that there was actually one or two different sets of everything, of the floats, and it traveled to the different parks. So the year that it came to Wonderland, I got to be in it. It was a lot of fun. And I believe that it actually wouldn't take a ridiculous amount of budget to create a parade like that specifically for Wonderland. It wouldn't have to travel across all of the Cedar Fair Park specifically for Wonderland because as Grace has mentioned and as Brendan has talked about in other videos, Wonderland really wants to be more of a theme park, a true destination park. They're taking a lot of inspiration from Disney and Universal. Um, as we heard, they did a little field trip down here recently to see Velocicoaster. So we know they're looking at parks that put theming top of mind and that do things like parades. Disney does parades. Universal does parades. If you really want to have a themed experience for your guests, then you need that lively, kinetic interaction happening in the park, not just on rides alone. It has to happen in the in-between, in those liminal spaces, so to speak. So I think a parade is necessary. And as somebody who used to be in the Wonderland Parade, I think I'm the one to talk about it. So here we are. Um, we need a parade. And as I mentioned in the intro, I think the best way to do it is to... Oh, sorry, I have an itch. I live in Florida and I'm an allergy sufferer, so it's inevitable. Um, I think the best way to do it is to, like I said, make it Wonderland specific. So to theme each float and each sort of section of the parade to a part of the park itself. Use the park as inspiration because we do have these really cool themed areas and if they really are going through with this plan that it seems like they're going through with to revamp each of the themed areas starting by bringing Frontier Canada something that was originally planned for Wonderland but never happened for the opening back in 81 oh god my memory let's hope my memory serves me in these videos you guys because I am not scripting I'm just going on the fly there may be a lot of text corrections on the screen in some of these videos <laughs> but Yes, so given that we now have Frontier Canada and they've made it clear that they're prioritizing being a theme park and a destination park, um, yeah, I think actually theming it to the different areas of the park would be really cool since we don't have as much IP to work with as a Cedar Fair Park. We have the Charlie Brown folks, <laughs> but the, the, the Peanuts crew, sorry, Snoopy and friends. Um, and that could be one float that would be a great float to entertain the kids and maybe we could have a couple of those characters able to walk around the parade in general i don't really know the rules i know back in the day we weren't allowed to walk out of our bounds so maybe not but anyways there could definitely be a peanuts float and a peanuts section and a whole kids section of the parade but i think we have a lot of opportunity with having like a frontier canada section and having like a mountie character and having a medfair section and having like a princess and uh you know prince that are sort of like canadiana but medieval themed i don't know maybe not the canadiana part maybe just medieval but whatever um and then an expo section that's all about the different cultures that we celebrate in the expo section of the park um, and the festivals that the park does. That would be a really cool way too, to maybe add in a little something extra when the park's doing certain festivals. Just saying, it would be a unique way to have a parade with characters and with elements that you can't go and find and see at other theme parks. It would be very Wonderland specific. It would be a, a new draw for families um, and for people who are into that kind of thing. Photographers like me that would love to take pictures of something like that. And we have so many amazing entertainers already employed at the parks. That's why in my intro, I mentioned that the divers do this trampoline element to their shows why not have a float that's dedicated to that? Because when I worked on the Nickelodeon float, there would be like a song or two and everybody would walk and the parade would be moving forwards and then you would stop. And you would do a little like choreographed dance and a little show to the audience on the sidelines. And then the parade would keep moving again. Um, and you know, sometimes the parade has to stop because 
there's geese crossing and you have to wait for them or you know somebody with a wheelchair got stuck in the middle of the path and so the parade has to stop for a minute to let people clear out of the way so it's so it's safe to proceed so there would be opportunities for the parade to stop and for those people to be able to show off like a little mini trampoline show on one of the floats um, you know, and we have dancers and acrobats and singers and talented people that could be sprinkled throughout these floats that and not just, you know, I know what it feels like to be sitting in a green room for hours <laughs> in between performances. So it would give these performers a lot more ability to also, you know, do different types of shows and showcase their skills, um, you know, and potentially expand the entertainment team because that team is awesome and Canada has a lot of really talented entertainment and there's not a lot of job opportunities in that field like there are you know in LA or even here in Miami and and Orlando it uh, Toronto just doesn't have as much so it would be really cool for Wonderland to expand that whoo I had to get that all out <laughs> so that's kind of my vision in my head um, and I feel like just based on things we've heard from Grace and from other park related interviews and press releases and the things that they seem to be doing with theming and with the expansions and whatnot I think it would just be a perfect fit and I think it would not cost that much money to put it together to bring it to life and if they dig in their archives, I'm sure they have some like evidence left over <laughs> and blueprints, so to speak, as to how it was brought to life back in the days when Wonderland was Paramount, Canada's Wonderland. So, you know, maybe Paramount left them some <laughs> tidbits and plans and things that would make it easier and more cost effective to bring to life. So, yeah. That's pretty much it. That's all I wanted to talk about in this video was that I think a parade would be a really cool addition to the park. I think those types of entertainment additions are something that isn't talked about enough um, outside of like the Disney world <laughs> and the more recently the Universal Sphere has started doing that more often. They've always done it like a Christmas parade and stuff, but they've started doing a lot more interactive, you know, live characters. Universal, I think, is a great example. If you look at Universal Studios, Wonderland should be doing that. Like, they have characters that aren't IP characters that just hang out in the parks and interact with people. Um, and I think Wonderland could really do that because they're really forming these great themed nooks that I guess was always how Wonderland was supposed to be. But I think the theming just became second tier level of importance for a while. And now it's coming back up to being like just as important as the rides, which is fantastic. So it's the perfect opportunity to bring in more themed characters and character interactions in the park, similar to what you would see at Universal Parks. Um, I think like SeaWorld Parks uh, do a little bit of that too, but Universal and Disney, I think, is kind of the, the level that they're going for on the theming side, and I am very much aligned with that. <laughs> so, share your thoughts below. Did you get to see the Nickelodeon parade um, when it did come to Wonderland? What were your thoughts? Would you like to see a parade like that? Do you think that would be maybe a really cool way to get the crowds out of the rides from time to time and give them something else to focus on? Because I do. Um, <laughs> but share your thoughts, let me know, and I will see you next time. We're kicking it all over town. This party's getting out of bounds. Every day's a second chance, so get on your feet and dance. Na -na 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 the Nickelodeon Celebration Parade. Only at Paramount Parks. Coming to Richmond, Charlotte, Cincinnati, and Santa Clara.